Good evening, Rabbi Tzai. Tonight we're going to discuss, uh, continue discussing, right? Uh, because we started actually yesterday. We gave a lecture inside over here yesterday regarding the issue of uh, bugs. So what's the issue with bugs? We talked yesterday at length about um, this this issue. So try to just give you a recap, you know, of what we said yesterday, and then to go on from there, right, uh, to other uh, very important things to become more, more, get a more comprehensive view of this whole issue. So, as we said yesterday, that uh, there's a Gemara, Masachet Makot, and also a Masachet Yeruvin. So over there, the Gemara says that uh, if a person eats an aquatic insect, you know, which, which uh, grows on the water, you know, like, uh, so he transgresses four prohibitions from the Torah. Four prohibitions, you know. So I, we stress the idea that a person who eats chazir, you know, pork, only transgresses one. You know, can you imagine? So this guy's transgressing four. It's for eating an insect. Then we have a land insect, you know, like an ant. How much does he transgress over there if he eats one ant? Five prohibitions from the Torah. Five. And then we said, it says in the Gemara, one more thing. If he eats a flying insect, you know, which is in the air, like a fly, you know, or a, a bee, something like that, right? There he transgresses six prohibitions. So we have four, five, and six, depending on where the insect grows. Why would anybody want to eat these things? Oh, well, you know, that's already a different issue. We're going to discuss this, by the way, you'll understand better what the, what the issue is. But, just to give you a little uh, reminder, right, we do have actually some countries where, you know, they consider it a delicacy to eat insects. Did you know that, by the way? Yeah, you know, know, like I, they always told me, you know, in France they eat chocolate cover ants, you know, uh, things like this. You know, there's they have all kinds of things, you know, in these countries. They eat insects, they eat all kinds of things, swarming things. So that's one thing. But we're talking here about a different kind of eating, which, which we're going to describe now, we're going to get into it. But we have three different types of insects, each one with its own prohibition. So it's much worse than eating pork. So uh, this is the way it is. So why do we care about that? As you said, right? Who wants to eat this stuff anyway? Who, who's interested? Right? Well, you, have, you have the people online, you know, get, trying to get that stuff to eat? Uh, not in this country, right? Not, not, not where we live. So uh, everybody considers it, to be, considers it to be disgusting, actually. Right? That's what it is, of course. So then what are we talking about, right? What's, what's the issue? The issue is that when you're eating some kind of a food, right, some kind of a dish, so what happens is, first of all, you got your salad on the side, you know what I mean? And you got there your romaine lettuce, you know, or whatever it may be, right? Uh, some uh, parsley, you know, Georgians like parsley, right? We're big parsley people, you know? Petrushka, Petrushka, you know? Then you have kinzi, you know, which what is how, how do you say that in English? Cilantro, Cilantro. right? You have that, right? Uh, and by the way, in the Hebrew, we call that kusbara, right? Uh, which is like an Arab name kind of thing. So kusbara. Uh, so we have that. Uh, so these kinds of vegetables and also many other types, like broccoli and cauliflower, they do actually have contain bugs. You know, that's what it is. It's a part of the package, you know what I mean? When you buy the package, <laughs> it's there together with the, with the whole family there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... There's no way to, to, to avoid that when you buy these kinds of things. So, you know, uh, the way we try to avoid that in the Jewish world, in the religious world, is that people now uh, are buying right greenhouse-grown vegetables, which are grown indoors. And there's special supervision also that they set up with that. So what happens is that because of that, uh, you're much less likely to get any bugs over there. Any, any insects in your, in your food, right? This is the way they do it over there, which is, by the way, it's, a, it's an interesting, nice method. As we said, right, that there is one downside to that, the, the catch. The catch is that they use a lot of ins insecticides, you know, a lot of pesticides in order to reduce the level of uh, infestation of the bugs. 
So because of that, it's got poison in it. You know, like these infested, these insecticides are poison. These pesticides. You know, so uh, you're eating some poison. You're having some vegetables, a little bit, with a little poison on the side. <laughs> like, no big deal. You wash it well. Do the best you can, right? Shalom, I said. Okay, so that's that's one thing, right? But the question is like this: What about when you don't have a, uh, that choice, right? To eat greenhouse grown and uh, with you know supervision and so forth and so on. What go, what happens then? Is there a way to eat these vegetables in a kosher manner? This is the question, right? That we have to we have to address. So we started to address it yesterday, actually, but now I want to get a little bit even deeper into it, you know, and more details and more more comprehensive. So the truth is, you know that. Um, in order to understand, first of all, how this works, a person has to understand. As we said, right, in the Gemara, we said, right, four, five, and six, depending on the type of insect you eat. <clears throat> but, here's the thing, right, we mentioned yesterday also another thing, which is, comes the Rashba, which is brought down in the Bet Yosef, in his book, um, Torah Adam, and also in the Tshuva, and also there's another book, Isur Veheter, Right, uh, which is brought down the Rama in the same siman uh, in Over there, it talks about some interesting things, though. You know, in other words, even though the Gemara tells you it's four, five, and six, as we said, says the Rashba, but if you're talking about something which is, you know, something disgusting, but people find it disgusting. So as we said, right, what do people find disgusting? They find it disgusting uh, when uh, they eat insects like this. You know. But by the way, why is it disgusting to eat those insects? There's two reasons why. Because the taste is very bitter. That's one thing, you know. Right? But besides that, you also have the issue of um, uh, of the way it looks, you know. Uh, just it's disgusting to look at it even. You know what I mean? So from both those perspectives, these insects are disgusting. You know, in their, in their, in their own... In their own... Uh, respective uh, ways. But what happens is like this. It says the Rashba that since these things are disgusting, so therefore they don't have the, they don't have the law, the halakha that you may expect with them. So I'll explain to you what that means. Right? As we said, the Gemara we already mentioned, 4, 5, and 6. Now we have another thing, which is it says in the Shuchanuch, right, in the Siman Kuf, in Yordea, it says over there that if a person eats something like a full body, you know, insect with a full body, ant, uh, fly, mosquito, and all these disgusting things that people get disgusted by them. If he eats those, uh, it's called, it has a designation, which is called beria, these, these types of insects. So beria means it's a, full, it's a full body, you know, in other words, it's a whole living, you know, insect. Right, so it's not a part of the body; it's the whole thing. So regarding this, the rabbis decreed. It says in the, there in the Shulchan Aruch that even if you eat it with a mixture of other things, you know, let's say you put it into a salad, you know, or some kind of cooked dish, it doesn't get nullified inside the mixture. You know, in other words, we, that generally we have a rule like this in halakha. The rule is that if something non-kosher goes into something kosher. It gets nullified either in, in a majority, it gets nullified, majority of good as versus the bad, or it could get nullified also in 60th, 160th of, of the measure. Right? So depending on the case, there are different cases, have different rules. But what he's saying is like this, right? That when it comes to a full body like that, which we called which we call beria, so there the rule is that it doesn't get nullified even in a thousand. So no matter how much you put next to it. It still is forbidden because of the rule of Beria, of, of a full body. So therefore, says the Shulchan Ruch, if it's one full body with uh, other things, even if it's a thousand times more than that full body, it does not get nullified. So it's still prohibited. The whole, the whole mixture is prohibited. That's what it says in the, in the Shulchan Ruch. But comes the Rashba and says, that doesn't apply to every case. Why? Because we also have another issue, right, in, in halacha, which is called noten tam lifgam. You know what that means, noten tam lifgam? This is brought down in kuf yud gimel, uh, kuf gimel, right, in the, in the shulchan Ruch. So over there it says that uh, there's something which gives bad taste to a certain food, right? 
So the rule is that if that ingredient, which is not kosher, right? Let's say something not kosher in that food. If it gives it a bad taste, in other words, it, it makes it taste worse, right? That's what it is. It doesn't make it taste better. So in a case like that, it's kosher. Why? Because it's not giving you a good taste. It's not improving the taste. It's spoiling the taste. So as we said, right, that these types of insects, they're also under this category. So they're, they're under two categories. One is that they're under the category of beria, which means that they're full body. So you would think, right, that means that no mixture can nullify them. It's still not kosher. The whole mixture is not kosher. On the other hand, noten tam nifgam. It's something which gives a bad taste, you know. So therefore, the rule is that it's kosher. So then, you know, which way you want to do it, right? We've got two different approaches over here. Two conf- contradicting, two conflicting concepts going on here. You know what I mean? So comes, comes the Rashba, one of the great Rishonim, the early authorities, you know. And he, he sets it straight, you know, with this whole thing. Great mind, great halachic mind he had, you know. He was an incredible thinker, you know, in, in halacha, you know. Like, not less than the Rambam, you know what I mean? Like, on that level. Can you imagine? Like, that level, you know. So, he comes and says like this, that when you have this kind of a non-kosher uh, insect, on the one hand, it's called birya, it's the full body, so it should be forbidden altogether. On the other hand, it's noten tam it gives you a bad taste. It's disgusting. So therefore he says that this is not the general, this is not a regular case of birya, of a full body. Because if it's a regular full body, meaning what? It gives you a good taste. So then it's not allowed to eat no matter what. But... Here, he says, the Rashba, that since it's a bad-tasting thing, it gives you a bad taste, so therefore it does get nullified a majority. So what does that mean? If this kind of a bug falls into a salad, let's say, right? Which is a very common case. Because, you know, you have salad with romaine lettuce, right? Things like this. And in there you have also bugs, or you have broccoli, which also contains a lot of bugs. So the thing is that once you put this thing into a salad, it gets mixed with other types of foods. Or the broccoli itself is a mixture, right? In other words, you have in there the floret, the broccoli itself, you know? And you have bugs inside there, you know, which you can't really see them because they're covered with the floret. So either way, it's a mixture of good and bad there, you know? So it comes in the Rashba and says, in cases like that where you have a mixture of good and bad with bad-tasting insects, comes the Rashba and says, Those are, that's kosher, according to the Torah. Ah, but you just told me, wait a second, but it's four, five, and six, right? Depending on what kind of insect I eat. I just transgressed more, more prohibitions than eating, eating chazir, than eating a pig. So comes the Rashba and says, no, here you have a mixture. The majority is kosher there, right? The majority is kosher ingredients. So therefore, that bug, which is also mixed in, comes and says the Rashba, if it's 51% not bug and something kosher, gets nullified. So therefore, says the Rashba, it's all kosher, this mixture. So this salad, which has already inside there bugs, right, according to what the Rashba is saying, it's a kosher salad. Black kosher. Why is that? Because it's, the mixture is, to, is more kosher than non-kosher. Percentage more, per, percentage-wise. That's the question. Oh, that's a million-dollar question, right? Maybe it's a machloket, maybe it's a dispute. Like everything else in the Torah, right? <laughs> if you know what I mean <coughs> so the truth is you know that regarding this issue comes a Bet Yosef and says everybody agrees with this you know so he brings over there the Ran the Rivash and all the Rishonim all the earlier authorities they all say the same thing because it's a bad tasting issue here something bad tasting even though it's a full body it does get nullified in the majority so you don't even need one sixtieth. You need just a majority to nullify it, right? So therefore, the rule is, you know, that the Rashba comes and says it's allowed to eat the salad, even though I got bugs inside here, you know, uh, or the broccoli, right? I even though I have bugs inside the broccoli, but I can't see them. I don't know where they are. If I could see them, I would remove it. What am I going to do? Look for it? What? Go inside there with a pinceta? You know, uh, it's impossible to. to to, to look for bugs like that. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack, you know what I mean? 
just not feasible, not, not practical. So comes the Rashma and says something amazing. He says, oh, and this is the Halakha, by the way, which is also brought down the Shulchan Aruch, and in the Ramah. Ramah also agrees, Ashkenazim. Everybody agrees to this. This is the Halakha, you know? That when you have a mixture of good and bad, and that bad-tasting insect is not a good-tasting thing, everybody doesn't like it, so therefore the rule is that th- that mixture is kosher. Unbelievable. But here's the catch, right? Uh, you have to understand this also. That even though the mixture is kosher, but we are reminded of a couple of uh, caveats here, right? Which are very important things to know. Very important conditions. Number one is that if you see the non-kosher ingredient in there, you know, in the mixture, you must remove it. If you can identify it. You know what I mean? It's just like right there, you know? You see that little critter, you know? Crawling around in there. Like, right? You see that little sucker there, the little critter. Take him out! Right? That's the way it is. Oh! So, you gotta, we got to remove it. So now the question is like this, right? That's what it says in the halakha. you got to remove it. Where does this come from, by the way? It comes from the Gemara. Same thing, you know? The Rashba brings it down there. There's, there's a Gemara like this. That if you, if you, the bug has to be removed. Also, if you eat, like, let's say, um, a salad, right? You know, and you, you feel the bug inside your mouth, you know, that you can feel it. In other words, you didn't know that there was a bug in there, and now all of a sudden, in your mouth, you can feel it. So what do you do? Can you swallow that bug? <laughs> well, if you don't know, if you don't feel it, you will swallow it. Right, I'm saying, I'm saying if you feel it, right? If what's the, what's the halakha? You, you'll, you'll take so, it out. so you take it out, right? So the truth is, you must take it out. You must remove it. Ah, but wait a second. Did you just tell me it's kosher, though, because the mixture and everything? Yeah, but you, you discovered it. So. Oh, okay. So you know what the answer is? The answer is, the reason why you must, have, you must remove it, even though we just said it's kosher, so says the rabbi, the Rashba, the rabbi decreed to do so, to remove it. Even though from the Torah it's kosher, this mixture. My question is, why yeah. were these bugs created in the first place? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good, good question, by the way. We have to discuss that some other time, but that's a real big discussion, by the way. They have a purpose. You know, every, every creature has a purpose. You know what I mean? Hashem created everything with a purpose. Even roaches. Nothing was created without a purpose. Exactly. Even roaches. Even roaches, of course. Those those disgusting critters, right? That we all hate. Everybody hates them. So, uh, getting back to what we said, right? Comes the Rashba and says, you must remove it from your mouth. You must remove it from the salad if you see it. What's the reason why? Because we're, the rabbis were afraid, you know, you're going to eat it by itself. Without a mixture. You know Why? Because it may get into your mouth without any other food at that moment, and you swallowed it by itself with no mixture whatsoever. So this is the reason why the rabbi said, remove it, because it may be you may be eating it by itself with no mixture. Hoppa. I got it. Okay. I never, you understand? I never realized that bugs were so important. <laughs> so now that's one thing that it's very, very crucial to understand. So what does that mean? Also regarding the issue of seeing it, right? If you see it, remove it. Why? Because you may come to eat it by itself. Yeah. This is the reason why the rabbi has told you to remove it. Even though it's kosher the way it is right now. Right now it's kosher. But you never know what it's going to be, right? You may come to eat it by itself. You know, in, in the future. In, in five more minutes, whatever. God knows, whatever, right? So therefore... Comes the Rashba and tells you, must we be removed? But here's what we learn, right? From all this Rashba, which is words of gold, by the way, very great, great halachic uh, description here. You see from there very uh, several things, you know? That if you can't see it, you don't see the bug, you know, or it's not in your mouth, you don't feel it in your mouth, you don't see it, not readily found, by the way, you know? It would take a, you know, like a, a miracle to find it, you know, something like that, you know what I mean? We're not, we're not expecting miracles from you. So therefore, you're allowed to eat it as is, you know, if you don't see it. <clears throat> but the interesting thing is like this, you know, that 
People get mixed up with two things over here, right? Which are very similar in halakha. You know what it is? There's the issue of worms. There's the issue of bugs, you know, of insects. Even though these two things, they're both not kosher, but they don't have the same rule. In halakha. You know what the difference is? The difference is that the worms are not always bad tasting. Sometimes they do actually improve the taste of the food. Don't ask me. I don't want to, I don't want to get into it. I'm going to get a stomachache just thinking about it. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know how that is, but right? the, the point is like this, right? That worms are not always bad tasting. So therefore, the rule with worms is that if something is infested with worms, you know, they're not bad tasting. So therefore, they don't get nullified in a majority, like we just said. You know, so if there's an issue with worms, they must be checked, you know, because, um, uh, you know, depending on the situation, right? If they're infested with worms. What's the classic case of infestation, by the way, you know, which is brought down al If you say, if you check three heads of, you know, of lettuce, let's say, right? And you find worms in each one. So then, you know, you can assume that they're infested. You have to check all of them. You have to check all the box, the whole box of lettuce. So, but when it comes to bugs, people think, oh, it's the same thing as worms. It's not. You know why? Because bugs are disgusting. So they get nullified in majority, but the worms do not. So therefore, the worm, you know, uh, is not going to get nullified like that, like we said with the, with the salad. It's not going to work. So if there's, if there's a chance of worms in there, they must, be, they must be removed, you know, they must be checked. If there's issue of bugs, not really so much, until, unless you see it. <coughs> because they do get nullified, because they're not good tasting, they're bad tasting. That's the thing, you know? So, uh, according to this, here's the thing, right? That in most cases that we have today, with lettuce and uh, with, uh, with parsley and with cilantro, things like this, what are we talking about? Are we talking about worms or are we talking about bugs over there? We're talking about bugs. You know, there's mostly bugs there, you know? So therefore, since the main issue there was bugs and not worms, so the truth is, you know, that according to halakha, as we said, right, if there's a mixture and we don't see it, it's kosher. So therefore, right, uh, this comes out to be uh, much different than you may have thought in halakha, you know, that on the one hand, if you eat these bugs by themselves, you're talking about four prohibitions, five prohibitions, six prohibitions. When you eat them in a mixture, they're kosher altogether if the, if the, if the majority is kosher. That's what the Rashba says. Everybody agrees to it. This is agreed to everybody. So, it comes out to be like this, right? That, you know, technically speaking, right? If a person eats broccoli, okay? And there are some bugs in there which he can't see. You know? So, he... Soaked it in water. He did his best, you know, whatever, to get the, get the garbage out of there. But he didn't really check it inside. So if he ate that, it's kosher. But here's the interesting thing, you know, that we said, right, that if you find one of those bugs in your mouth or in the food, you have to, you have to remove it, right? But here's the thing, that when it comes to these bugs, which are on the lettuce and uh, the uh, parsley and dill and uh, things like this, you know, cilantro, so things like this, what happens is that uh, those are so small, they can barely be seen by the naked eye, number one. You know, uh, so the truth is that most of the time you're not going to see those things. And also they say they stick to the leaves sometimes. They stick, they, you can't remove them with soaking. So the ones that can be removed with soaking, okay, fine, soak it in water and remove it, you know. And, uh, but the ones that stick and remain there, so what's the rule with them? What's the rule with them? The rule is that they're kosher as is. Because if you don't see it, you know, and you're eating them, and you don't feel them, they're too small to get into your mouth and feel. No, who's going to feel that? Right? So therefore the rule is that all these things, in cases like this, mixtures, where you don't feel it, and you don't see it, you can't identify it, or let's say it got dissolved, right? That's also another case, which is brought down in the Rashba, and also brought down in the Shulchan Ruch. Because the Shulchan Ruch passes like the Rashba. It goes like the Rashba. So it says the Shulchan Ruch, if it got dissolved into the mixture, you know, the whole body, right? It, or it got disfigured, you know, the body, you know? It doesn't have the same shape as it had originally because it got dissolved.
because of cooking, right? So it says the Rashba, once you get into a cooking situation where it gets cooked, what happens is that that body becomes anymore not a Bria. It's not a Bria. What does that mean? It doesn't have a, f- a full body like it used to. It, it already got deformed because of the cooking, you know? So therefore it's allowed because of that reason. So the truth is, you know, that cooking also is very good. If you cook that vegetable, you know, it says the Rashba that it's allowed because even if it was a worm, by the way, which we said is more severe, because they sometimes they give you a good taste of worms. But nevertheless, what it is is that uh, even though the worm gives you a good taste, once it gets into a cooking situation, it gets dissolved. So therefore, says the Rashba, once you cooked it, it's allowed anyway, no matter what it was, whether it was a bug or a worm. Because you can assume that it got dissolved in there. Sfix, fika, doubled out. So that's what it says. That, that's another thing what the Rashba says. So this, these are very, very, very important things to understand, you know, these concepts. Because if a person really knows them, he doesn't have to really spend so much time worrying about the issue of bugs, you know, and insects and, and all kinds of things like this. Why is that? Because as we said, right, that if you don't see it, you can't readily find it. It's mixed into a mixture. Uh, says the Rashba, says, says Manana Shukhanuch, says the Rama. Oh, everybody agrees that it's kosher, this, this mixture. You know, as is, it's kosher. You can eat it as is. Right? So, therefore, the truth is, you know, that uh, because of what we, all we just mentioned, uh, honestly, you know, honestly speaking, uh, you don't really need so much, according to halakha, to buy these uh, greenhouse-grown vegetables. You know, because even though they're less infested, much, much less than the ones that grow outside, the ones that grow outdoors, Nevertheless, though, you know, that if we apply these rules and we know how to use them, you usually, we usually don't have a problem, you know? That's the thing. So, uh, so what does that mean? The rule is, you know, practically speaking, if you see it, get rid of it, right? That's what it is. Or if you feel it right on your mouth, get rid of it, spit it out. Because the rabbis decreed you shouldn't eat it like that. Not because the Torah said so. So what does that mean? Once it's a mixture and the majority is, is kosher there, the Torah it already permits that food. That's all we have, you know? So therefore, a person shouldn't think, oh, you know, like some people say, this claim this, by the way, you know? They say, if I eat a salad, <coughs> which may have some bugs in there, I'm eating, um, I'm, preparing, I'm doing four prohibitions, five prohibitions, six prohibitions, as we said, right? It's not true. Why? Because that only applies when you eat them by themselves. But when you're eating them in a mixture, it already got nullified. So therefore, whoever says that is a liar. I'm not telling you the truth. And a lot of people have, are mixed up, by the way, about this. They don't understand the clarity of, of the distinctions that we just spoke about here. Uh, so therefore, right, uh, what should a person do? Of course, the best thing to do, you know, is to buy green, greenhouse grown. But if a person doesn't have uh, the wherewithal, financially speaking, or, or maybe because it's not available in the store that he shops, or whatever it is, you know, or maybe it's not fresh, it's not, not good quality produce, the, the stuff they sell. I don't know, whatever it may be. Either way, whatever, whichever way you want to add it up, right? The rule is that uh, these things are um, a kosher, right? And according to what we just said, you know, uh, comes out that if a person tells you, "Oh, n- never eat the broccoli in those restaurants, never eat the cauliflower, never eat these, never eat that, never," that. it's not really true, you know, because even though there are bugs in there, uh, but nevertheless, since it's a mixture, you know, with other things. So therefore, the rule is that there's no prohibition to eat them, because you can never find those bugs. They're not they're not readily seeable, or visible, or whatever it is, right? They're not they're not feelable either. You can't feel them either. So therefore, the truth is that uh, in cases like this, it's allowed. So as we said, right? Bottom line: if you see it, remove it. If you see it intact, right? Uh, get out, get it out of there. If you don't see it. Just be quiet and eat it. That's what it is, right? Either that or, or uh, right? Uh, if you want to be a Hasid, you know, you want to be stringent on yourself, that's a very different issue. I'm not going to get involved with that. But according to Halakha, this is Halakha. Okay, Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen. Thanks for coming. Be blessed with wealth, health, and happiness. And we'll see you in Eretz Israel, in Jerusalem, Bezat Hashem, next week. And less Chazak Baruch. Interesting.